Earworm by Simon Passmore. people, so I will keep this short and sweet. Well, short anyway. <laughs> there's good news and there's bad news. The good news is we've got another series of Britain's worst to make. Oh, <laughs> more the same. Well, only this time we'll need to be more creative. We've already covered the obvious ones. Now we need to find new stuff that won't cost us an arm and a leg. Britain's foulest falafel, <laughs> which just happens to be within five miles of this office. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So what's the bad news? Uh, the bad news is they've cut the budget, which means losing someone. There are three of you now. From next month, there will only be two. But those two will get a proper contract. These will be jobs, not traineeships. No more minimum wage. What's the new rate going to be? We can discuss that at a later date. The point is, instead of three interns, we'll have two full-time researchers. How will you choose? Well, the selection process will be performance-related. How exactly? I'll give you each a brief. You put together a proposal, <clears throat> then I choose the best two. Josh, Britain's worst kebab. Seriously? Lois, Britain's worst sunbed salon. Do I have to actually, you know, use them? Aren't some of them dangerous? Lethal even. Mia, Britain's worst film director. Oh, do you want to swap? Mia's the film expert, isn't that right, Mia? Uh, well, I, I studied it at uni, but I wouldn't exactly call myself an expert. Who's I you going to be? I thought James Thin. Who's he? <laughs> Someone who made a horror film that was so bad he wouldn't let anyone see it. Isn't that an urban myth? Well, you're the researcher. You find out. Edelweiss. Not only do you come out here for smoking breaks despite being a non-smoker, but you even bring a lighter. Do you mind? Of course not. Mm. Oh, thanks. So, kebabs. Is it all about the meat? Or the chilli sauce. Don't forget the salad. But a kebab isn't about the salad. It's about the fat trickling between your fingers and running down your chin. Oh, you've put some thought into this. Yep. And we can shoot it here, no problem. There's a disgusting place near the bus station. That's me fallback. So you're sorted then. How about you? Oh, me, I'm screwed. Charlie knows exactly what he wants. And if James then is Britain's worst film director, why would he agree to an interview? I think it's a great idea. I love bad horror movies. The guy's bound to be a laugh. Yeah, if I can find him. Of course you can. All I've come across so far are rumours. My best friend's friend worked as an extra on the film and her head exploded. My mate's sister's cousin had to have an operation for brain parasites and now she's a zombie. The director lives in a crypt and only comes out at night. <laughs> I mean, actually, I think he might be dead. There's nothing on IMDb. I could help you look. We're rivals, remember? My kebab's a piece of cake. <laughs> I can afford to be generous. What would Lois say? Well, she's not here, is she? She isn't a smoker. Neither are you. Oh, God. Hi, Josh. So, how's it going? You found anything yet? Oh, it's going really badly. There's just nothing out there. It's like he's you know, off the grid. Maybe he disappeared for a reason. Yeah, more likely he just gave up, made a film, didn't work out, everyone lost money and now he's back to stacking shelves to pay off his credit card. So what are you going to do? Tell Charlie it's not going to work? Ugh, not a chance. He'll give it to Lois and I'll get the sunbeds. Sunbeds are a toddle. Yeah, sunbeds are boring. Where is this? It's... Oh, yeah, hang on. What is it? Oh, this could be something. Yeah, what is it? Uh, I'll see you at the office tomorrow. Have you found some? What the hell 
was this? Okay, the truth is I lied. Lied about what? On my CV, I said I got a first in film studies. Actually, it was a 2-2 and I only just scraped that. Maybe he knows and he's given me this to punish me. You're being very nice. Am I? Look, Charlie told me he went to film school and he knows about this stuff. He, he probably wrote his dissertation on low-budget horror movies. Then he could help you. Mm, maybe. And anyway, even if you're right, all you'd have to do is track down Finn and get an interview. Then you're home and dry. You said you'd found something online? Yeah, it's a music video he directed. I've got the name of the production company. Maybe they're still in touch with him. Only one way to find out. Are you here for the casting? Uh, it's the second for... door on your right. Go straight in. Oh. Come in. What's your name? Uh, Mia, but I'm not... Take your top off, please. What? You've done this before. Uh, done what? Ah, first time. Uh, I'm a researcher with a TV company. You're um... wasting your time. This is all legit. Oh, no, I'm not researching into it, whatever it is that you're doing. Uh, I want to ask about a director you worked with, James Thin. Never heard of him. On a music video. Look, we did all kinds at one time. Weird shit, some of it. But we're talking a long time ago. Haven't done a music video in years. Used to be fun once. Now it's more trouble than it's worth. This was like a horror film. It's quite disturbing. Yeah? Come in! Hi. Ah, you're here for the casting? Stand over there and take your top off. I'm trying to find him, the director. I can't help you. We did tons of them. Most I can't even remember the name of the band. No money in it. Wouldn't you have his address on file? I doubt it. Or Finn's phone number. Hang on a minute. Finn? Wasn't he the one with the weird brother? Oh, I don't know anything about it. that job wrote this music made you want to throw up. Look, unless you want to audition too, I'm going to have to ask you to leave now. Tina! I've got ten more girls to see after this one. This way. OK, love. Let's see what you can do. So you're not here for the casting? I'm looking for a director. You're in the wrong place, then. He wouldn't know a director from a hole in the ground. Well, how about you? Me? I might. I'm a bit out of my depth. Well, there is someone who might be able to help you. He knows everything there is to know about films. Really? This is where he works. It's a specialist bookshop. Great. Thanks. No worries. You're not the only one who's in the wrong place. Hi. I wonder if you can help me. Are you looking for something in particular? I'm trying to track down a director, quite an obscure one. No one seems to know anything about him. Mm, try me. James, then I think he may have made a horror film. Earworm, or... 1993, 73 minutes, no certificate, starring Lena Chapman. Thin also credited as screenwriter, producer, cinematographer and editor. Score an original story by his brother, Aaron Thin. Oh, so he did make it. Oh, he made it all right. Earworm. Have you seen it? No one's seen it. How come? There are no DVDs, no release prints. It never went into distribution. So far as I know, it's only ever been screened once. Then how come you know so much about it? Earworms are legend. I mean, among people who know about film. It's unusual for a director to spend two years on a project, bankrupting himself in the process, and then destroy it. Then destroyed it? That's why there are no copies. Why would he destroy it? Well, that's the big question, isn't it? Most directors want as many people as possible to see their film. What's the earworm about? Oh, it's early techno horror. There's a virus that lives in audio files and infects people's brains. Mm, yuck. Quite advanced in its way. This was before iPods, of course. Then what? The victims became like zombie ants, just waiting for the predator to eat them alive or whatever else he felt like doing. Oh, that sounds revolting. Mm. But, well, anyway, I need to talk to Thin. Are you a journalist? A TV researcher. Any idea where I can find him? No. But there's a piece he wrote about it in Projector, the summer issue, 93. Oh, have you got a copy? Uh, on top of that pile, by the fanzines. Uh, 75 quid? That's a collector's item. There's a photo of Thin in there, too. Uh, who's the actress? I've never heard of her. Lena Chapman. That's because she never worked again. At least not that I know of. Any idea why not? She had some kind of accident. Uh, thanks for your help. And what about the magazine? Uh, yeah, I'll think about it. Telly people. Oh, it's Josh in. Making coffee. Have you found Britain's worst director yet? Oh, still looking. 
Well, that's a nice turn for a battered sausage. If I have to visit any more salons, I'm going to look like Leatherface. <laughs> Lois, do you want to come in now? Fair master's voice. Got to go. Another beautiful new low for the one on the high street? Uh, you want a coffee? Uh, no, thanks. Where's Lois? In with Charlie. Those two have been getting very friendly lately. Oh, you think? I think it's not good news for one of us. Have you watched the body language? What are you, the undercover anthropologist? I'm just saying. While you're trying to find the invisible man, Lois is ticking all Charlie's boxes. Maybe it's you he's got in his sights. Have you thought about that? He told me this morning it wouldn't work with just two girls. Said he needed me to do the heavy lifting. Don't worry about me. Don't so you think one of us should? I can't wait for you to see these things. They're absolutely terrible. Sounds good. So you're all sorted? Pretty much, I think. No need for any more tanning sessions then? I think everything's under control. Yeah, sounds like it. Mia, how's it going? Oh, fine. I'm just off to visit an actress. If Josh can give me a lift. What? Oh, sure. I can, I can finish this later. Awkward nursing home. Can't you know she lives here? Well, there was a piece about her in a local paper. Horror actress suffers breakdown after cliff top drama. It was a big deal at the time. Well, at least in, here in Hastings it was. All I could get was the headline, the rest was subscription only. Realise this is probably illegal. Well, I don't see why. Won't we have to say we're family or something? Uh, fine, I'll be her niece. What if she doesn't have one? Uh, then she's not my real aunt, I just call her that. You don't feel... What? bad about visiting someone stuck in a nursing home. No, I don't feel bad. She'd probably love a visitor. I, th I thought you said she'd had a nervous breakdown. Well, according to the newspaper, for all we know, that had nothing to do with Irma. <sighs> Hello, Lena. Hello. You don't remember me, do you? Should I? Well, that's because we've never met before. Uh, oh... oh. Well, she said, the nurse said... I want to talk to you about Earworm. Earworm? The film you were in. Oh, God. I tried to never think about that. Painful memories? It was so long ago, just before my accident. The director was a man called James Thin. Do you remember him? Oh, not likely to forget, however much I might want to. What was he like, the oh. director? He knew nothing about actors, I can tell you that. Or acting. Stand here, stand there, look frightened, scream. Mind you, I didn't know much myself. Yeah, I, I think he only hired me because I was local and he didn't have the money to pay for an hotel. Does he ever come to visit you? We worked all day without a break. Or all, all night too, sometimes. Have you ever seen the film? It, it wasn't very experienced. None of us were. I, would, uh, I suppose he knew what he wanted. Uh, I'm trying to find him. Any idea where he lives? James wasn't the problem, though. Not like the other one. When James wanted me to look scared, I, I just had to glance in his direction. And then I didn't need to act. Who? Hello, Lena. Are you all right? That's nice, isn't it, that your niece has come to see you? Who? Oh, perhaps I, I better leave. Uh, oh, stay a bit longer. What did you say your name was? Uh, I'm going now. Can I have a word with you outside? I'll write down my number, Lena, in case you think of anything else. <gasps> uh, here. Now, please. Uh, uh, goodbye, Lena. It was, it was lovely to meet you. Up on the cliffs. <laughs> That's where we filmed it. I remember running. Running, and I, I remember him. The other one. Who was the other one? Lena. Inside me. What is it? Inside me. Inside. Please me. leave. Now. Oh, Lena, I'm so Inside. sorry. Just go. Inside. It's all right. It's all right. Inside. Can I have some help here? Inside. Well, did you see her? You know where Thin lives? Oh, I don't think so. What's the matter? Oh, I upset her. I made her remember something she wanted to forget. Maybe this wasn't such a good idea. Whatever it was she remembered, it sent her right over the edge. People have feelings, you know? Something or someone. What? 
Have you listened to anything I've said? Of course, but if I back off, how am I getting fined then? I don't know. So what now? Back to the office? Yeah, I suppose so. Uh, hello? Did you visit Lena Chapman this afternoon? Uh, who is this? It's a simple question. Well, I, I went to the nursing home and spoke to her, yes. And you and I need to talk. Uh, well, we are talking. Face to face. You haven't told me who you are yet. I'm Craig. I'm her brother. Craig? Do you have any idea what you've done? To Lena? Uh, what? You've put her back, well, I don't know, years with your questions. Oh, hang on. We were just chatting. I didn't mean to upset her. Who are you, anyway? What did you think you were doing? I was asking Lena about a director she worked with, James Thin. Oh, God. What's your interest in this? Who are you? A researcher. We're doing a piece on him. So you talk to Lena about Earworm? That's the last thing she needs. Can't you see what that film's done to her? They call me at work. When I got there, it's like she'd gone back 20 years. She was terrified. Of what? Just drop it, OK? I, I can't. I need to find Thin. I thought everyone had forgotten about him. My boss hasn't. He wants me to interview her. How come? Don't tell me someone has decided the earworm's some overlooked masterpiece. It's for Britain's worst. Britain's worst director? <laughs> That sounds about right, though the competition's pretty tough. Earworm was certainly the worst shoot I've ever been on. Nightmare. Well, you were there too? Yeah, that's how I got into this game. I was a spark. Though just like quite a few of them, I didn't have a clue what I was doing back then. Can you tell me a bit about it? Uh, some things are best forgotten. The film was made in Hastings? Yeah, that's right. We are all locals. The director said we'd had to be there because he was mapping the psychic currents. Whatever they are. I think he just wanted to avoid spending anything on travel and accommodation. What was it like making the film? I thought making a horror movie would be a laugh. Well, this one wasn't. People kept having accidents. I had a lamp explode in my face. Another spark got electrocuted, nearly died. Second AD crashed his car. He was lucky to get out alive. It was nothing but bad luck from day one. Almost like the whole production was... Cursed. Sounds ridiculous, I know, but... Yeah. Yeah, exactly. The director didn't know his arse from his elbow. But he wasn't the one who spooked everyone. That brother of his. The other one. He was down on the unit list as sound designer. You never see a sound designer on a set. But there he was, every day, whispering in his brother's ear. He never spoke to anyone else. If you asked him something, he just stared straight through you. What happened to... at the end of the shoot? Well, we'd been filming in this sort of underground shelter up in the hills behind the town. Some kind of bunker. That's where we had the rap party. Got a bit wild. Everyone was so relieved the shoot was over. Some of us went up to get some fresh air. And that's when it happened. Lena said she was up on the cliff. She remembered running. She got to the edge and just kept going. I saw her disappear. What was she running away from? I don't know. It didn't fall very far, as it turned out. There was a ledge. In the dark, we couldn't see that. We thought she was dead. She was in a coma for two days. When she woke up, she was... Well, a different person. Doctors said she'd taken something. What well, I expect she had, we all had. Doesn't explain what happened, though. What did then do? Him? Nothing. And his brother? Aaron was nowhere to be seen. He just vanished. But what about the film? Once it was finished, did, did you ever see it? After the fuss died down, it all went very quiet. That's normal. I got a job in a teleseries in Yorkshire. And then I heard there was a cast and crew screening. I was at home, so I thought I'd go along. That was an eye-opener. In what way? Quite a few people didn't come. Not because they were working, though, because they couldn't. More accidents. Weird. One in a million chances. Then we saw the film. Well, part of it. 
only part of it. It was the first time any of us knew what the story was. Thin kept things to himself. Even the cast never saw the whole script. So we were all curious. Pretty soon, though, people started to walk out. I didn't stay to the end. You didn't like it? No, it wasn't that. It was... I know, something to do with the music, maybe, if you can call it music. It just worked its way inside you. It was like an infection. I couldn't wait to get out of there. And afterwards? We all went our separate ways, tried to forget it. Wish I could. Any idea where Thin is now? Still in Hastings, as far as I know. Heard he works at some kid's adventure place. How many more of these places are there? This is the last, I'm sorry. It looks like it's been a wild goose chase. Maybe Craig was paying you back for upsetting his sister. He didn't seem that sort of person. Oh, turn left. Here it is. How did you expect to recognise him? Just add 20 odd years to the photo in the magazine. <laughs> Help you. Uh, hi, uh, I'm looking for James. There's no James here. Or Jim? His surname's Thin. No, you got the wrong place. Well, he's a he's film director, or at least he was. Why are you looking for him? I, ju I just want to talk. Journalist? Uh, researcher. No, sorry, I can't help you. Uh, will you excuse me? I've got to keep an eye on those kids. Any luck? I'm not sure. Could have been him. So what now? Do you mind waiting? When he finishes work, we can follow him. Seriously? I don't know how else to get him to talk to me. Even if it is thin, he's never going to agree to an interview. Well, I'll persuade him. How? I don't know. Yet. Just explain the situation to Charlie. I'm sure he'll understand. Yeah, that I couldn't hack it. I'm not going to give him that satisfaction. Oh, there. Is that him? Yeah, getting into the van. Are you ready? She's a lot calmer now, aren't you? I had a word with that girl. You should never have let her in. Well, Lena, I'll leave you to talk to your brother. Yes, he's coming. Who is? Him. He's coming. He's here. Oh, it's just you and me, Lena. There's no one else. I can feel him inside me. Inside my head, he, he, he wants something. What does he want? Her. Who? The girl. He wants the girl. Oh, he's going into the house. A purple dash semi with a privet hedge. I was expecting something a bit more auteurish. You still think you got the right bloke? Uh, you're a snob. I'm only saying it doesn't look like the home of an edgy film director. This is just suburbia. Well, isn't that where all the darkest secrets are hidden? Anyway, he isn't a director anymore. So, what now? Um, I go and introduce myself. Why are you following me? I only want to talk to you about your film, Earworm. There's no story. Nothing. Please leave me alone. Just let me in for a few minutes so we can talk properly, and then I'll leave you in peace, I promise. Why would I do that? Because then I won't tell anyone else where you work and where you live. Well? I'm with a TV production company and we want to celebrate the best of British horror movies. Crap. No one wants to celebrate Earworm. 
You want to stitch me up? What's this really about? Uh, the show's called Britain's Worst. Uh, you were nominated for Worst Director. <laughs> Finally, recognition. Thank you for your honesty. So, I, I expect you'd like an interview with the self-deluded idiot and maybe some choice clips from his train wreck of a movie. Uh, something like that. Sure. Why not? What? I mean, it was 20 years ago. Who cares? It can't hurt my career because I don't have one. I am still paying off the debts, though. Maybe your company can help. There's just one problem. What's that? The film. Earworm doesn't exist anymore. So no juicy clips. Well, I know there weren't any DVDs, but you must have your own copy. Must I? No, I don't think so. How come? The film was destroyed, so I'm afraid there's nothing for you to show your viewers. Well, how did that happen? I destroyed it. Because it was so bad? No. Sorry, I didn't mean... As a matter of fact, it was good. For a low-budget horror movie. Almost too good, in fact. That was the problem. I, I, I don't understand. Why would you destroy your own film? Earworm didn't just scare the audience. It scared everyone. It scared me. Oh, that must be a first for a director. You don't understand. Then explain it to me. Just believe me when I tell you it's better that Earworm no longer exists. That's all I have to say. No, no film, no clips for your programme. I'm sorry you've had a wasted journey. What will you say to Charlie? Mm, tell him to fire me and get it over with. There's no way I'm getting anything out of Thin. Do you need him? Can't you just show him clips of the film and do it that way? Well, I told you, the film doesn't exist. Give so much for Charlie's great idea. Then he can't hold it against you. I'm not so sure. Oh, could you drop me here? You aren't coming in the office? No, I'm going home. Hello? I understand there's something you're looking for. Uh, who is this? A film you want to see. Are, are you talking about Earworm? I can help you. Uh, how did you get my number? If you want. Uh, I was told it doesn't exist anymore. Who am I talking to? I'll send you a link. You don't know my email address. Oh. How did you do that? Hello? Hello? I... I'm here. Wait a minute. Now you're in my computer. How did I get onto this site? Have you it caught control of my laptop? When you're ready, click on it. What happens if I watch it? To me, I mean. The thing about Earworm is it has a tendency to get inside your head. Wait, D don't go. I need to ask you to. You again. There's nothing more to discuss. It does exist. We've been through this. It's on the internet, a private website. Someone sent me a link and a password. Who? You didn't watch it. Not yet. I wanted to ask you. Don't. Delete the email. If it was me, I'd erase your hard disk too, or maybe just junk the whole thing. What are you talking about? That's why I don't own a computer. I haven't used one for years. Because of earwork. You don't know what you're dealing with. What am I dealing with? Who was the man on the phone? You spoke to him. Well, he didn't say who he was. Or where, I suppose. No. Change your phone too, then. <laughs> Isn't that a bit extreme? You're not in the circumstances. 
You know who it is, don't you? I think I can guess. I heard about your brother, how he disappeared. Is, is that who it is? Is Aaron the reason you destroyed the film? Why you've been keeping a low profile? If you won't tell me, then I suppose I'll just have to ask him. No. Don't do that. Did you fall out with your brother over Earworm? <sighs> you could say that. Why? I thought we were working together. Uh, collaborating. Uh, he wrote the story and composed the music. Did all the sound and I directed. That was how it worked on the videos. Then I cut the picture while he edited the sound. We got to the end of post-production and, and put it all together and... That was when I began to see what he'd really been doing. But even then, I, I didn't understand, not, not fully. Aaron hung on to the soundtrack until the last possible moment, so the first time I saw Earworm complete, the whole thing was with everyone else at the cast and crew screening. It was quite a shock. This wasn't the film we'd set out to make. So what was it, then? Earworm's the story of a virtual virus that lives in audio files and enters victims' brains when they listen to a particular track. Then it takes over. Only somehow, Aaron made that happen for real. Oh, that's impossible. How? I don't know. Maybe he's the one I should be interviewing. I wouldn't advise it. Sure you haven't watched it yet? Well, Ben's got me spit now. It was also a very Blair Witch. More like an Asian horror video, you know. If you watch this, you're gonna die. Well, look what happened to Lena. She didn't watch you, Wayne, though. Yeah, perhaps she didn't need to. She's in it, after all. Anyway, if I don't... Forget the job. Have you told Charlie you've got hold of the film? Oh, he's delighted. He says he wants to watch it too, once I've got Thin to agree to an interview. So what are you going to do? Oh, I don't know. Thin's just trying to talk up his movie. Yeah, I'm not so sure. But he seemed nervous. Something about that film frightened him. Or something about his brother. Oh, either way, I can't just not watch it after all this. Why not? Because... Then I'll never know what it's like. Don't imagine I'll get another chance. So, have you decided? I don't know. Are you scared? I know it's just a film. Yes. Your brother told me it was dangerous talking to you. Did he say why? No. There's only one way you can find out. Otherwise you'll have to go on wondering. Are you going to answer that? No, oh, I can wait. This is more important. What do I do? Download it? Earworm, it's already there. What is this site? It looks so wrong. Just click on the file and start watching. Okay. No answer. She's probably busy. That's what I'm afraid of. Send her a text. Charlie! Can I have please? I'm a bit worried about me. Not me all. I mean, what if there is something dangerous about Ewan? It's a film, Josh. Just a bad film. How can it be dangerous? The worst it's going to do is bring on an attack of nausea or extreme boredom. It's just James Thin rang earlier, the director. Rang here? He was trying to get hold of me. She's not picking up. He told me his brother's in the film. Is he? I didn't know he acted. Who does he play in the film? Not like that. He, inside it. 
put his brain patterns into the soundtrack, encoded himself or something equally mental, I don't know. Thin said some very weird things. Encoded himself? <laughs> I love it. According to Thin, someone watches the film and Aaron uses it to get inside the head. Like the actress we visited. That's why Thin wouldn't let anyone see it. Brilliant. It's every director's fantasy. A film so powerful it gets hold of you and won't let go. <laughs> Look, it's just wishful thinking. The poor guy's completely lost it. Well, I agree, Thin does sound crazy. He was saying his brother's created a virus that lets him control people like computers, you know? A living botnet. Well, maybe Mir will be able to make something of it after all. So you don't think we should do anything? Such as? I don't know. There you are, then. Focus on your deadline. I'm sure Mia can look after herself. I'd like to have a quick meeting in, say, half an hour. You'd tell Lois, would you? Sure. Ophio cordyceps unilateralis. It's a parasitoidal fungus that infects ants and turns them into zombies. The ant leaves its own habitat in the jungle canopy and attaches itself to a leaf near the ground. Now it's just food for the fungus. As the ant dies, a stalk grows out of the back of its head, bursts, and spores rain down onto the ants below, infecting more of them. Why are you telling me this? Because... You've been infected with something very similar. Now it's your turn. Can you feel it here? Inside your head. Inside your brain. Inside. 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 Inside me. Inside me. Inside me. So, cutting to the chase, you two get the new contract. <gasps> what about Mia? Nah, I don't think she was ever really in the running. Do you? Their talents lie elsewhere. Did you give a thing to interview because you knew it wouldn't work out? Let's just say that kebabs and sunbeds are what this show's all about. But if Mia can make something out of an old film that nobody's seen, then I'm sure we'll be able to find a corner for it somewhere. When are you going to let her know? Not your problem. She's a friend. Josh, let Charlie handle it. Someone should tell her what's going on. I'm going round. There's really no need. I think there is. Josh, I wasn't expecting you. Can I come in? I wondered how you were doing. As you see. I've got some news about work, your job. Charlie says... Tell him I quit. What? Why? Did you get me a message about the film? Yes. But it was too late. I'd watched it by then. Oh. Well, it was a ridiculous idea. <laughs> As if a film could infect you. You've got blood coming out of your ear. Hey. <laughs> What was it like? You and um, the film? I don't really want to talk about it. Are you sure you're all right, Mia? I... I have to leave now. Why? I'm sorry, Josh, I don't have much time. Yeah, wait, wait, wait a minute. And there's someone I have to see. What do you want? It's the middle of the night. I've seen it. What? Oh. You'd better come in. What? 
And it's just like Lena said. Now it's inside me. I warned you. I know. That's not why I came. Why then? At the moment, I'm still me. But he's there too. Inside my head. And he wants me to do things. What things? He wants me to make arrangements. Bookings. He must have been thinking about this for a long time. The plan is to start off by showing it in a few clubs, get some word of mouth going, and then the launch. Aaron's going to release Earworm. After that, people will be able to download the film. It'll go viral. No. That's why he wanted me. Why he needs me. To be his workaround. Soon, if he gets his way, there'll be an army of us. You've got to stop him. I'm trying, but he's so strong. And I'm getting weaker all the time. How long have I got? I don't know, not long. Okay. So I'm going to need your help. To do what? Isolate myself. Quarantine. Go somewhere. There are no phones, no internet, no means of communication. He'll be there with you. I know. Inside your head. I know. But he won't be able to make me do anything, anything that affects anyone else. What about hospital? Oh, it's the worst possible place. Lots of people, lots of technology. If I'm alone with him, then maybe I can fight him. At least I can limit the damage. Mm. There is a place. It's a cottage in the Black Mountains. It belonged to a relative. No electricity. It's very basic. Can you drive me there? Now? If you're quite sure that's what you want. I'm sure. I like it here. I'm getting used to it. I know you're still there. I can feel you waiting. But at least I don't have to listen to your voice. And now I know what I've got to do. I can wait, too. I'm no good to you here, am I? But this is fine for me. So... I'll stay. I'll sit it out. For as long as it takes. In Earworm by Simon Passmore, Mia was played by Chloe Piri, Josh by Sean Mason, and James Thin by Justin Salinger. Lena was Jane Slavin. Charlie... Ian Conningham, Craig, David Acton, and Lois was Betris Jones. Other parts were played by Paul Heath, Jude Akawudike, and Roslyn Hill. The producer was Sasha Yevtushenko. Mm-hmm.